America is once again in mourning over a mass shooting. In Las Vegas, a lone gunman opened fire on a country music festival, killing 59 and wounding hundreds more. The attack once again reignites a national debate over gun rights. Here this morning to discuss are Xandra Rice Hawkins of Granite State Progress and Susan Olson of the Women's Defense League of New Hampshire. Thank you for joining us, ladies. Good morning, and thanks for the invitation, Adam. There's a particular accessory uh, that we're talking about in this attack, the, the bump stock, which allows a semi-automatic uh, weapon to fire more rapidly. And uh, somewhat surprisingly, we're seeing sort of a groundswell from both Republicans and Democrats about possibly banning or more closely regulating this. And in an interesting development, uh, the National Rifle Association is not saying no. What do you make of this, Susan? Well, first of all, we uh, at the Women's Defense League are not rifle instructors. However, um, I did a little bit of research on it. I've never fired a rifle uh, with that sort of modification. However, in researching the ATF website, I found, actually, and I brought you a copy just so you might have it, um, a letter that was written in June of 2010 from the uh, Bureau of Alcohol, uh, Tobacco and Firearms Department of Justice in response to an inquiry about the new design for this modification. And it says, your letter, and this is from the, the uh, developers of this modification, your letter advises that the stock commonly referred to in this uh, reply as a bump stock, is intended to assist persons whose hands have limited mobility in being able to bump fire an AR-type rifle. And it says the submission includes the description and drawings and so forth. The letter says the stock has no automatically functioning mechanical parts or springs and performs no automated, automatic mechanical functions when installed. So it was in this letter back to the designers of this modification said it's it's not a, a firearm it's a modification and therefore it is legal under the uh, Firearms Act the National Firearms there's two large documents that that convey the national gun laws one is of course the uh, Gun Control Act and secondly the National uh, Firearms Act so under the ATF ruling in 2010 or at least this letter, as opposed to a ruling per se, it was viewed simply as a modification. But so, do you agree with the NRA now saying that they're open to, to open to regulating it? Is that okay? Well, I don't know why you regulate parts of a, of a firearm. So I'm I'm watching the debate very closely. And again, because we are not rifle instructors, our familiarity with this is not perhaps what it should be to speak mm -hmm. openly. Zandra, is this surprising to you that the NRA is giving some ground here? Well, first, I just want to take a moment to say that we are um, expressed from Grand State Progress and our allies in the gun violence prevention movement um, our deep sadness about what happened in Vegas. Those families and um, and even the survivors are going to have a long road ahead of them as they recover. That said, um, we do hope that uh, this sparks some action in Congress and um, the bumps sales are one piece of that. Um, I was heartened to see the NRA come out in support of moving forward with that. I do say would say that this is one part of a much bigger problem and so while we knew, know that the shooter in this situation was able to shoot off hundreds of rounds of ammunition in mere minutes because of this uh, modification um, that there are several other instances where we need to close the background checks loopholes, make sure that domestic abusers and felons don't have the easy access to firearms. I am familiar with that letter that Susan read um, and I will say that the manufacturer who created this particular um, modification is not somebody who has any um, inability to shoot the firearm themselves. In fact they say um, quite um, boldly on some of their um, marketing materials that this is a modification for people who want to automate um, being able to shoot the firearms. And we should have action in Congress to help close that loophole. Right now, it is illegal um, to have automatic fire um, weapons unless you had one that was grandfathered in, and there's a really high standard um, for those. And um, we know that there are a lot of people out there who are using these modifications, and even by the technical definition about the mechanics um, that they qualify right now, that is exactly why we need a bipartisan effort in Congress to change the law and close that loophole. If there were more stringent gun laws in place, how would this attack have looked any different? Well, just from the um, 
the very basic amount of ammunition that this um, shooter was able to do. To be able to shoot down 500 people in a matter of 10 minutes, kill 58 individuals, that takes in a tremendous amount of firepower. And one of the things we see about um, weapons that can be automated more is that they have more, um, more strength of fatality. And so these are weapons that are modified from military assault um, weapons and they, are, they have no place on our streets. And Susan, the argument from the other side is often that bad people who are motivated will often get their hands on these guns and these items no matter what. Well, that's generally why they call them criminals. They do tend to break laws. But um, I wasn't in Las Vegas. I was not privy to any of the reports, so I can't really speak to Ms. Hawkins' um, assertions there. But uh, I'm waiting for the, the full report uh, on, the, on the killings. We're seeing these high-profile mass shootings on a fairly regular basis now. It's undoubtedly a public policy problem. If the guns themselves aren't the issue, uh, Susan, what can be done uh, about this ongoing issue? Well, that's a very good question. And, and speaking for myself personally, and I believe also on behalf of the Women's Defense League of New Hampshire, we would welcome an honest conversation. But until the time that uh, Ms. Hawkins and her allies are really willing to admit that their focus is on the ban of firearms and their confiscation. You never hear from that side, we just need one more law, just one more law, and then we'll never ask for another. So I would welcome that open conversation, but I'm not sure that we're ever going to have it. Is that the end game, Sandra, the, the, the ban of firearms, the repeal, essentially, of the Second Amendment? Absolutely not, and I think unfortunately it's rhetoric like that that makes it hard to move forward on this conversation. We have seen tragedy after tragedy after tragedy. My own entrance into gun violence prevention and awareness was the Columbine shooting back in 1999 where I was a high school senior watching my peers in states just a few states away being gunned down in their hallways and that was my introduction and here we are 18 years later and we are still having mass tragedies, mass shootings and we still have inaction in Congress. Now we know at the state level we are moving forward. Um, several states have moved to close background check loopholes. Here in New Hampshire we have worked to address the piece around how domestic abusers access firearms um, but there are th other things that need to be done and we can't have the rhetoric that every time we talk about public safety and gun violence prevention that this uh, you know where the corporate gun lobby rears its head and says we can't talk about this at all or we need to wait um, and mourn because there is no time to take action if we're just mourning every single what tragedy. Do, what does an honest debate look like though? Well, I th for example, here's one. Earlier this year, President Trump and um, Republicans in Congress rolled back um, a, a rule from the Obama administration that those with um, severe mental illness, like the people who, who um, their mental health is so uh, in such a poor condition that they cannot function on their own, um, that they be added, their names be added to the background check system so they can't access firearms. That was a perfectly reasonable um, step to take. Um, yet. Um, you know, President Trump and the Republicans in Congress rolled that back. Here at the state level, we have tried a couple of times to close our background check loopholes. We know that uh, estimates are around 40% of people get their firearms through private sales or online sales. They should be subject to the same background checks and, and, um, and rules that those who buy from federally licensed dealers are. And Susan, you know, we see people with uh, large amounts of guns or weapons, and that is problematic for some Americans. What is the purpose, other than collecting, of having so many weapons uh, that are not designed necessarily for hump hunting purposes? Well, we don't call them weapons. We think many things can be a weapon. A baseball bat can be a weapon. Uh, a keen wit can be a weapon. So there's a pejorative there that, that we disagree with. A firearm is a firearm and it is an inanimate object and if we're focused on the dangers posed by inanimate objects, you have to question why hypodermic needles, which are designed only to inject chemical substances into the human body, are allowed to be uh, readily available or given away for free when so many people are dying from heroin. 
Now, I'd like to push back on that. We hear from Susan that it's not about the people. We can't close background check loopholes, it's, and it's about firearms. Then we hear it's not about firearms, it's about the people, and she doesn't want to take away uh, you know, the, the ability for somebody to fire hundreds of rounds of ammunition in mere minutes and gun down 500 people. You can't have it both ways. We need to address this public health crisis in our society. 33,000 people die from firearms violence every single year. We hear in the news about the major tragedies, but every Every single day communities are rocked by this violence. 100,000 people who are shot. So out of that, you know, we need to have this conversation as long overdue and frankly, we need people to get on board. I'm glad the NRA is going to be supportive of um, the regulations around those bump stocks, but we need to close the background check loopholes. We need to make sure felons, domestic abusers, and suspected terrorists cannot easily access firearms in our country. You can respond. Well, I would wish your concern was as great for the million children that are murdered in the womb that never even have a chance to defend themselves. So we have a little bit of a cognitive dissonance here on the value of life. If we want to talk about another issue, we can, but we're talking about gun violence prevention right now and the very lax uh, laws we have in our country. And I would like to say that you know, we have tried to work across the aisle with groups like Susan's, and it is very difficult when they won't engage in an honest conversation. I think that is a lot of the frustration, both at the state level and the federal level right now, and I just hope that the one outcome of these national tragedies is that we have more people who understand how severe the situation is, and, and you're seeing that already. There was a band member um, from that concert. I would just say, but Susan, is there any common ground here? Do you think, is there a starting point for dialogue? There should be, and in fact, we've invited Ms. Hawkins and, and your lovely wife as well uh, to sit with us at the Women's Defense League and go through one of our education programs at, at absolutely no charge, and in fact, I would be delighted to personally be your instructor. But we, we never get a response, we get a horrified look, and when, when gun control is defined as um, when you believe a, a woman who is found strangled with her own pantyhose uh, in an alley is morally, has the moral high ground to a woman who is explaining to a, a law enforcement officer how her attacker suffered that fatal wound. I think we, we, we need to talk about natural rights of self-defense. We've tried. We've testified. We've never gotten a positive response. We've never gotten a response at all. And, and I'll issue it publicly today. We would love, we would welcome your entire organization to be our guest in a classroom, at a range, at any time that you would like. And we'd be happy to work with you on opening that honest dialogue. Well, we do have to wrap things up here. I, I would just it, like I, to say, when we've been invited before, I let you know that we have other people who we go, who have offered to take us to firearms um, classes and ranges, and that I didn't need that from you, but I appreciated your offer. And I know I there are witnesses to that, that conversation. Good. Well, thank you, ladies, for coming in today. We appreciate your time.